So if a person believes that the earth is flat, you can't talk him out of that. He knows it's flat. You go out of the window and see it's obviously it looks flat. So the only way to convince him that it isn't is to say, well, let's go and find the edge. I was a pretty active kid growing up and just like any other kid, never expected anything abnormal health-wise would even be something I'd think about until, you know, until I was older. During my first term at the University of Oregon, I started waking up with headaches every morning. At first, it was like coinciding with finals term, and I was thinking, oh, my first, first time through college finals, and I was taking school super seriously at the time, made dean's list that first term, and thought, you know, it was related. Like, oh yeah, this is normal for finals week. I'm just stressed out and trying to make the most of what I'm given with college, and turned out that was not the case. So all of a sudden, instead of my headaches getting better after coming home and relaxing over the holidays with family. I'm seeing worse and worse headache symptoms every morning, like like clockwork. Like I'd wake up in the morning, splitting headache, and then have breakfast, and it would slowly dissipate through the mid-morning. And I'd be fine later in the afternoon, but um, same thing again the next morning. And it got to a point, like two weeks out of school, where I was thinking, you know, something's seriously wrong with me. Let's say uh, we, we take as the basic supposition, which is the thing that one sees in the experience of satori or, or awakening, or whatever you want to call it, that this now moment in which I'm talking, you're listening, is eternity. That although we have somehow conned ourselves into the notion that this moment is rather ordinary, and that we may not feel very well, and that uh, we're frustrated and worried and so on, and that it ought to be changed. This is it, so you don't need to do anything at all. But the difficulty about explaining that is, you, don't, you, you mustn't try not to do anything, because that's doing something. That next day, we scheduled an appointment at a radiology clinic in Bend, and um, instead of going back to school for winter term, that next Monday, like all the rest of my friends, we were we were getting an MRI um, on my brain, and that was kind of the tipping point with the whole thing. I walked inside and told my parents the news and I think they kind of all had that same reaction. They realized that um, these headaches, <sighs> sorry, this is hard to talk about. Uh, they realized that all these headaches that I've been complaining about for several weeks now were actually serious business and um, we made our way over to the clinic to speak with the doctor. They let us in through the back door and um, I just remember that car ride across town was, um, it was like just silent. We all knew something serious was up and um, I think everyone was like kind of in that awkward position where they're like on the brink of tears but wa wanting at the same time to remain strong because like who knows maybe it's nothing. Um, but yeah they let us in the back door and we sat down in this dimly lit, empty lobby, and the doctor came and met us and um, broke the news to us that they had immediately called us in because I had to have immediate um, emergency surgery to remove um, a fairly large tumor from my brain, but the main issue was a really, really large um, cyst associated with that tumor that was nearing my brainstem. So within days to weeks it could grow to the size that it could completely cut, cut off blood supply to my brain and I could just die on, on the spot.
because it is that jolt that suddenly brings you here. See, there's no road to here, because you're already there. And if you ask me, how am I going to get here? It'll be like the famous story of the American tourist in England, who asked some yokel the way to Upper Tudman, a little village. And the yokel scratched his head and he said, Well, sir, I do know where it is, but if I were you, I wouldn't start from here. <laughs> <laughs> so you see when you ask how do I attain nirvana liberation all I can say is it's the wrong question why do you want to attain it because the very fact that you're wanting to attain it is the only thing that prevents you from getting there you already have it and uh, when you want to wake up you will just like that. I'll guess to how life is in general, and it's it it again going back to this idea that it's so easy for people to, in general, and for me to get caught up in what we're doing every day, to get caught up in what I'm doing as an athlete, and forget about all these amazing lessons I've learned about myself as a person. Instead, it's like a reminder of like our temporality and our basic needs and our um, imperfections and our, our smallness in this world and the idea that we're just lucky to be here doing the thing we're doing, but it's also beautiful in the fact that it's so delicate in itself.